A continuous and aligned fiber reinforced composite having a cross sectional area of 1130 mm squared is subjected to an external tensile load. If the stresses sustained by the fiber and matrix phases are 156 MPa and 2.75 MPa respectively, and the force sustained by the fiber phase is 74,000 newtons, and the total longitudinal strain is 1.25 times 10 to the negative 3, determine the following. A. The force sustained by the matrix phase. B. The modulus of elasticity of the composite material in the longitudinal direction. And C. The modulus of elasticity for fiber and matrix phases. So let's recap data. We have cross-sectional area. We have the stress on both fiber and the matrix. We have the force on the fiber, but not the matrix. And we have the total strain on the material. So now let's jump into part A. How do we figure out the force sustained by the matrix phase? One of the first things we need to do is figure out what's the volume fraction of fiber and what's the volume fraction of matrix, because we're not given that. Eventually, we'd like to figure out stress in the fiber phase will be equal to the force on the fiber, which we know, divided by the cross-sectional area of the fiber. However, we don't know what the cross-sectional area of this fiber is, but we do know something. We know that the volume fraction of the fiber should be equal to the cross-sectional area of the fibers divided by the total cross-sectional area of the composite. Now we do know this. That allows us to write the area, the cross-sectional area of the fibers should be equal to the volume fraction of the fibers multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the entire composite. We can then take this value, plug it in right here. So let's go ahead and do so. That allows us to write that the stress on the fiber phase is equal to the force on the fiber phase divided by the volume fraction of the fibers times the cross-sectional area of the total composite. And now we're to a point where we know pretty much everything here. We know what the stress on the fiber is. We know what the force on the fiber is. We know the cross-sectional area. The only thing we don't know is the volume fraction of the fiber. So let's write that out. Volume fraction of the fiber should be equal to the force on the fiber divided by the stress on the fiber times the cross-sectional area of the entire composite. Plugging in values for this, 74,000 newtons, 156 megapascals, MPa, and 1,130 millimeters squared. Now recall that a newton per millimeter squared equals a megapascal. If you didn't remember that, you could remember that a mega means times 10 to the 6th, and millimeter squared, when you convert that to meter squared, has the same 10 to the 6th conversion factor. So it cancels out. That allows us to calculate the volume fraction of the fiber as 0 0.4198. Now that we have that, we can figure out the force sustained by the matrix rather simply. First, we recall that the volume fraction of the matrix will be equal to 1 minus the volume fraction of the fiber, which will now then be 1 minus 0 0.4198, or 0 0.5802. The stress on the matrix phase, which we know, will be equal to the force on the matrix phase divided by the cross-sectional area for the matrix phase. Using the same trick as before, we can rewrite this as the force on the matrix phase divided by the volume fraction of the matrix times the cross-sectional area of the composite. This finally allows us to rearrange and write that the force on the matrix phase will be equal to the stress on the matrix phase times the volume fraction of the matrix phase times the cross-sectional area of the composite or 2.75 megapascals times 0 0.5802 times 1130 millimeters squared gives us 1803 newtons which is the answer for part A. Now let's do part B. 
the modulus of elasticity of the composite material in the longitudinal direction is what? To solve this one, we recall that the modulus of elasticity is going to be equal to the stress on the entire composite divided by the strain that the entire composite undergoes. How do we figure out the entire stress on the composite? Well, we can remember that the entire force on the composite will be the force carried by the fibers plus the force carried by the matrix. Therefore, we can write the stress of the entire composite will be equal to the force carried by fibers plus the force carried by matrix, all divided by the cross-sectional area of the composite, and take this and plug it back into here. Therefore, the modulus of elasticity for the entire composite will be equal to force of fibers plus the force carried by matrix divided by the cross-sectional area of the composite, all this divided by the strain. Plugging in values for this, When we plug these into the calculator, I find that the total modulus of elasticity is equal to 53,665 megapascals. Or, in other words, since a, there are 1,000 megapascals and a gigapascals, 53.665 gigapascals. Let's move to part C. The modulus of elasticity for both fiber and matrix phases. To answer this question, we need to recognize that we are under isostrain conditions. Isostrain conditions simply means that the strain is equal throughout the whole material. This means if you have a fiber reinforced composite and you pull on it, that you don't just get fiber stretching. You get the whole composite, which is fibers, matrix, all stretching, and they're doing so at the same rate, so you have the same strain. This allows us to write the Young's modulus for the matrix phase should be equal to the stress on the matrix phase divided by the strain of the total composite. Also, the modulus of the fiber phase should be equal to the stress carried by the fibers divided by the strain across the whole composite. Plugging in values for these, this is 2.75 megapascals as given in the problem statement, divided by 1.25 times 10 to the negative 3 given in the problem statement. We find that the modulus of elasticity for the matrix phase is 2,200 megapascals. Or in other words, 2.2 gigapascals. Meanwhile, for the fiber, this is 156 megapascals divided by 1.25 times 10 to the negative 3, which is 124,800 megapascals or 124.8 gigapascals.